Hi, I'm Bob Collier, and welcome to RTP Business Live. We're here today with Joe Navarra, who is a speaker and best-selling author. We want to learn a lot about Joe and what he can do for our business. First, though, we want to find a little bit about Joe and his background. Joe, help us out. Well, thank you for having me on, Bob. I really appreciate We're it. We're glad to have you. Yeah. Well, my background is uh, I've been in the printing industry for almost 30 years, which scares me to death to think you that. You must have started as a child, I Joe. I did. I oh. start, actually, I started pre-birth. Um, <laughs> but no, I've been in the industry for a very long time, and I started out uh, just as a regular, you know, doing customer service. Eventually started to do graphic design sales for myself because I was also a graphic designer. And I just, from that, I do, you know, at the time, what's funny, what I share with people often is that I didn't realize I was doing sales because I was just, I would just drive around and go to small print shops because I had my own equipment at home and I would mention to people that I can do uh, graphic design and if they needed somebody and nobody had a lot of the small printers mm -hmm. did not have computers at that time now oh you're dating yourself yes now. yes <laughs> now had you told me you wanted me to go out and do door-to-door uh, -door sales I would have told you that you're crazy but it didn't occur to me that that's what I was doing and right. and then I just found out that I was actually pr pretty good at it and that's where I, where I started with that. Eventually, I realized that networking was a great way for me to to grow my business mm -hmm. in you know from a sales perspective, uh, networking, referral partnerships, and that. So I've done. I did printing. I've you know for a long time did about five years of real estate in uh, downtown Brooklyn, New York, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and that one, you know, I did very well with that. And again, it was all networking. It was word of mouth, you know, and uh, that no like and trust, developing relationships. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and so when I purchased my own printing company uh, and eventually, you know, moved on to, you know, to doing what I'm doing now, mm -hmm. that's, it's all about word of mouth. Well, let's tackle the first part of this. Okay. What made you want to be a speaker? Well, you know, for a long time, because of my experience with working with people in a networking perspective and working with people, always I've always been the connector. I give people a lot of referrals. I've I'm a, I'm, I try to really work hard on follow up. I've learned and developed my own techniques for follow up. So because of that, I. Was I saw people were not as good as me at it. A lot of people. I'm not talking a handful of people. Like most people, I found were not very effective at their networking. And I was trying to figure out a way that I could help people. Um, I was trying to come up with a web, a specific website that I can do that, a service, and I and it just was not. I was having a difficult time. And I went to go see somebody speak one day, and. And I re and I've already been a f was already a fan of speakers, but this was somebody that I was in my sphere, and I realized I said, you know what, that's a way that I could get the message out to larger pe to a larger audience. Mm -hmm. um, well, what came first then? Uh, obviously, speaking is an important role that mm -hmm. you you take on. Um, did that come first, or the idea to write the book? I know it's all tied back into the networking concept. Right. And maybe we better tackle that a little bit. Um, is part of the book concept and the networking what motivates you? Is, is it the, you mentioned people don't really understand how to network properly. Is that the kind of the push for you? Well, with the book, the book came uh, after the speaking started. However, I have, I've been writing for many years. Uh, I've written two other novels that I haven't gotten published yet, but now that I know how to do it, I will get them published. They, well, so fiction? Two fiction novels, okay. yes. Okay. So I've, I've been a writer for many years. Uh, it's, I mean, I've been writing since I'm a child, but where I actually wrote seriously, I'd say I've been doing since my mid-20s. Mm -hmm. And so when it was suggested to me 
that to back up the speaking that I should write a book, I figured, well, you know what, I know how to do that already. I know how to write a book. And so I just did it the way that I just wrote it one chapter at a time. And what I did initially to write the book was I sent out questions, uh, I sent out emails, I should say, to about 200 people asking them what would be the questions you would want to ask somebody regarding networking. And so I got back, let's say if I got back 25%, people responded to the emails. Well, that was 20, 25 to 50 questions mm -hmm. on email, because a lot of them were, were the same questions. Right, right. And so, I, but I got back a lot of responses, and that was a majority of the book was written uh, outside of the stories, because the stories are, mo are personal, personal stories or somebody else's story that I know of. But a lot of the meat and potatoes that come f that are in the book come from uh, from the questions, and I just answered them how they've worked in my life and my networking uh, over the years. Well, let's get the book title out there. It's intentional networking. Right. Intentional networking. Right. Where does that title come from? Well, I'm a big believer in that everything we do should be, we should be intentional about what we're doing. Uh, you know, it, during one of the elections, we heard a lot about that word waffling. I I really try hard to not waffle on things. I want to. I I sometimes I'll take my time making decisions on things, but that's because I want my decision to be final. And so I'm very intentional about the networking I do. I'm intentional about the referral sources that I have backing me up or that I'm backing up. But the, the term intentional, just uh, intentional networking, actually came from a meeting that I had with, uh, with two attorneys. I was going to be speaking for a woman attorney's association. And I wanted to make sure that I was addressing issues as that they would be facing as attorneys. So two friends of mine who are attorneys, uh, John Paul Schick and Donna Berkelhammer, we met for coffee one day. And John Paul had made the comment. He said that, that attorneys need to be very intentional about their networking. And I said, there's my book title. <laughs> I wrote that down immediately, and, and that's what I, I've been working. And Two groups where words mean things, attorneys and authors. That's so right. I knew that title didn't come by chance. <laughs> right, there was right. An important meaning behind that. Although, if we can cut that part out, because I don't want JP to get any uh, credits on <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's shift gears a little bit. Um, we know a little bit behind how the book came to be. Who should read it? Who's going to benefit from the book? Well, the people that are going to benefit from the book or should read it are definitely small business owners, entrepreneurs, and sales professionals. Uh, those are three groups of people that will definitely get a lot out of the book. Now, that's when I'm, I'm lumping in to the uh, sales professionals and small business owners and entrepreneurs, I'm lumping in their CPAs, maybe attorneys. Uh, they, they're definitely mixed in there uh, because they fall into those categories. But anybody that, that wants to grow their business by word of mouth. Uh, I think that's critical, especially the, the salespeople, I don't know. It depends on the industry, but I know there's a lot of specific training that they might get. Mm -hmm. But the small business owner, the entrepreneur, their focus is really their product or their service, and they may come into this with no clue about the networking and how to do that right. Right. So I think that the timeliness of the book is, is critical. And if you can walk people through the importance of intentional networking uh, and, and the steps, it sounds like there maybe are, are specific steps preliminarily. Um, I mean, it, the intentional well, network sounds like you don't just walk into a chamber meeting and go, here I am, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you, no, you're absolutely right about that. Uh, the, it depends on the person, first of all, and what their personality is like. Like, by nature, I, I'm a guy that can be pretty introverted. I can be shy. I don't necessarily like crowds, especially crowds of people I don't know. Uh, thank God I had somebody who invited me to, the, to my first big networking event, and I was able to feel more comfortable. I stayed by her side the entire time, and she introduced me to people. 
and, and then I was able to eventually go on my own. And so that's one of the things that I always suggest to people is if, you're, if you are shy about going to networking events, bring a wingman. But that, uh, with that, the, after you do that, the, one of the most important things, there's so much in between when you go to the networking event and you know, where I'm going to, what I'm going to say now is the most important thing of anything you're doing with networking or you know, any kind of referral relationships is the follow-up. Uh -huh. If if you're not doing the follow up, then just stay at your office and and just hope the business comes in because it's very unlikely. You know, there there may be people that'll come back to you, but do you want to take that chance? I'd rather up my chances and call them first, or send them an email, or send them a, a note card saying it was nice to meet you. I think so many people make the assumption that 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 initial meeting uh, is either going to make the relationship happen, the sale mm -hmm. happen. Uh, so you're saying that is what it is. It's an initial meeting. It's just the start. That's right. And if you don't follow up, you, you, you've lost that opportunity. Absolutely, yeah. One, you know, a lot of people, they think that they're going to go to a networking event and it's going to be like the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And that they're just going to walk in and start taking orders. Right. Where's you my know, order? Yeah, writing orders out to everybody, you know. <laughs> and, and it's not that way. Uh, it's, it's re networking is about relationship building. And, and you know that saying, you know, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And I do believe in that. But I don't even necessarily have to like you. But I certainly better know you and I better trust you. If I'm going to do business with you, you know, I, not everybody is. We're not going to like each other all the time, but that doesn't mean that I, you know, that I'm that I still can't trust you. And Interesting. So, that, so there's only so much time in the relationship building initially that maybe you want to spend on your commonalities. Right. Uh, but as long as if I if I need you, if I need your services, I want to certainly uh, you know know you a little bit, and and I have to have good feeling about you. Uh, that okay. I can trust you. Well, I, I threw out the chamber, but can you give me some examples of um, where someone should go to start their networking? Well, the chamber, first of all, is one of the best places uh, to start. To, you know, you call your local chamber. If, you're, if you've never networked before and you're unsure of what to do, you, your local chamber is one of the best places to start. You pick up the phone, call your local chamber or stop in and just ask them where are some uh, places that uh, I could do some networking, some business networking. Now of course they're going to try and sell you on a membership right away, uh, <laughs> but you know if, they, if it's a good chamber they'll be willing to tell you, oh there's an, a leads group that meets on Wednesday mornings at this location or you know there's business and beers on Friday nights at this location. The, a good chamber will still give that information you know to promote business. Mm -hmm. Uh, another great place if, that I, I really push this with a lot of people, if you're, if you're new in business or if you're a new salesperson or you, you know, this is something you've never done before, I say check out one of the, those, the groups that have you know, where you have an exclusive seat in the group. Hmm. And some of those is BNI, which is mm -hmm. Business Network International. There's uh, other ones for women, uh, I think Women's Power Networking. You know, there are different types of organizations out there that really focus on networking. Now, you pay to be, you know, you pay to play, right. but the rewards can be great as long as you're a participant. If you're just there to, you know, to, have, to sit in the back seat and hope that it's going to come to you, then you might as well get off the bus now because you're not going to, uh, it's very unlikely it's going to happen. You got to be a, you got to be a willing participant, and you know that law of reciprocity. You so gotta it's give not a walk-in and expect to take order situation either. Absolutely not. Okay. I, I mean, it it does happen, but you will not grow your business that way. Interesting. Um, well, you've touched on some of the uh, areas where you can, and different locations, organizations where you can uh, participate in networking and learn about networking. Mm -hmm. What are some of the questions you get? Uh, um, from your prospects and readers uh, about that and about just networking intentionally? 
Well, one of the biggest questions that I get asked all the time, which is kind of interesting, and I've had to learn this the I had to learn this from the chamber president in Chapel Hill was is it okay to interrupt the conversation that's in place if you're at if you're at a business event I struggle with that yes yeah. and so uh, now the the president of the chamber he had said you're at a networking event people are there to network just walk over and join in the conversation now what I came to realize is that not everybody wants you to join in their conversations and there's an, another good book out there called networking like a pro and they actually have a bunch of diagrams in the book that kind of show you different body, you know, body positions when mm -hmm. it's when people are open to for you joining in on the conversation. You know, if they, if two people are standing like that, you know, fate, you know, like on an angle, mm -hmm. then it's more okay to go and stand there and wait to be invited into the conversation. If two people are standing like that, face to face. Then they probably don't want you. you they're pro it's that's a closed conversation, and the same thing goes with if it's three or four people. If they're clo if they have a closed circle, they're probably looking to make that a closed conversation. Whereas if the circle, if it's more open, then again there there's an invitation for people to join in on the conversation. Uh, that's just that's one of the big questions that I get a lot, and so I try to do demonstrations of that. At my when I do my speaking uh, presentations, I try to to do that. You know, often bring a couple of people up to show people that. So it's important to read those clues that aren't explicitly said. They don't hang a sign, but you need to be able to read the body language to to understand what they're telling you and what right. it's okay to approach. Interesting. Yeah. And then another thing that a lot of people ask about is how to you know systematize their follow up. And so I talk, you know, I, I try to, you know, suggest that people have a CRM, a customer management system, customer relations system. Mm -hmm. And so that, and I use Zoho. It just, it depends on what makes you comfortable. Some people use Salesforce. Uh, I think uh, in real estate, I'm not sure of the name. It might be Top Performer might be the name of it. And, you know, so different, but just try and use a CRM system. Set up alerts to remind yourself to follow up with people. Back to that follow-up yeah, that you mentioned so, early. So right. critical. So yes. collecting business cards and you're done is not the right approach. No, no, not at all. <laughs> I mean, it, it, in my book I have, and in my presentation, I have a complete section on doing that, on how to do that with, you know, breaking it up into three, you know, A, B, and C prospects and how, you know, who is most important and how to follow up with each of those different uh, categories that very important. Well, I, I think we're touching on it, but um, so many entrepreneurs, uh, small business people are do-it-yourself type folks. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I did start the business myself and I'm going to do the, the networking myself. Are there uh, solutions that you might suggest for, for a do-it-yourself or to try? Um. Well, I, any of this will work for a do-it-yourself or, uh, you know, sometimes being a small business owner can be, can be lonely sometimes. You know, long hours, late nights, weekends, and so we're all, for the most part, do-it-yourselfers. Uh, and, you know, unless you have a, a, real, a lot of income coming into your business, we end up wearing many hats as small business owners. The, when it comes to the networking, and you know that's where you where you can develop a sales team of people that can back you up, uh, and it doesn't have to be some big parade of people. It can be a handful. You know, like at a business, I'm going to use BNI again as an example. They have what they call uh, spheres, business spheres. So like there's the B2B sphere, there's the the home remodeling sphere. I forget what they're called, but there's different spheres of groups that you know that will focus on a particular mm -hmm. tar you know market and that you know so that's what you want to make sure again goes back to what I said before you want to be intentional about who are your referral partners who are your referral sources you want to be very intentional about that so that and then you can still be uh, a little bit of a John Wayne if you want you know <laughs> riding off into the sunset but so this way you don't have to have a thousand people that are you know behind but, you. But it does sound like to me that maybe taking that 
I'll do it myself attitude may not be the most beneficial thing for my business. Is no. there a role for a pro working with a professional such as yourself uh, to improve my business rather than me having to wear that one extra hat that right. doesn't quite fit? Well, one of the things that I've developed uh, of, you know, over the the time that I've been doing the speaking and the writing is I developed with the help of other people a coaching program that is for helping people to go to develop better networking strategies to develop a really strong word of mouth marketing program for themselves Perfect. and and that has been really effective uh, there I've had a couple of specifically one person who's a CPA uh, she's done very well uh, since we've gotten together and started working together, has really helped her business take off, and that's you know that's something that I find has you know sometimes like I need a coach, I need a coach for you know for the I needed a coach for speaking, I needed a coach for you know developing uh, for marketing my my business, I needed a coach when I got towards the end of the book, I needed a coach to help me get across the line, the finish line. So, you know, it, it's not, there's nothing wrong with having a coach there to help you to, to reach those milestones that you're trying to reach. You know, I, I, I'm sure you've heard it said before, Tiger Woods has a coach. You know, <laughs> right. Tiger Woods isn't just Tiger Woods. You right. know, he has a coach. Michael Jordan, I'm sure, had, a, had besides Phil Jackson, had, a, had a, probably other people he was paying that were p helping him to become the greatness that he is. Sure, sure, yeah. I, I don't. I think making the assumption that you either have to do everything yourself or should do everything yourself. Both of those assumptions are probably misplaced. Absolutely. You may be expert in the field that your business is in, but that doesn't mean that you can't or shouldn't uh, seek help in the other areas. Um, we probably touched on them, but are there some top typical mistakes that people make in the area of, of the networking and the intentional networking? Well, we'll start with one that's kind of funny, uh, and then we'll go back to one that I talked about a little earlier. But the one that's kind of funny is when is the, the guy or gal that walks around a networking event just shoving their business cards in everybody's hands without any conversation or no, with no care about what the other person does. That that is, it's a big turnoff, and Absolutely. yeah, and 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 it's it's just not good, and it's it's actually more of a business killer. I'm going to say number two is something that I I, I read in a book by Jeffrey Gittimer uh, called uh, the Little Black Book of Connections. He makes a comment in that book where he says, uh, if you're going to a networking event and you're going to drink, you might as well bring your competitor's business cards. <laughs> and, uh, and I agree with that because I have met some people at networking events that had a little too much to drink and they were clearly they, embarrassing themselves and not, not in, a good, in a good way. You know? Right. They've missed a total uh, an opportunity and they've, yes. they've, as you said, served it up on a silver plate for their right. competitors. Right, for their competitors. <laughs> the, going back to what, what I was talking about earlier about the, you know, when I talked about uh, the people that go there thinking that they're just going to walk into a networking event and start getting business. This, I would say, is one of the biggest mistakes is that they don't get business uh, immediately and so they just don't come back with the belief that networking does not work. And that, to me, is a big mistake and they're losing a great opportunity. Whether it's at, you know, uh, a local networking event, the chamber, if it's at, uh, like, for instance, you should go to your best, uh, you know, your target market, it's probably best if you go to their association meetings. That's, you know, that's being intentional. Right. Going to your, you know, and so a mistake would be going to that association meeting, not walking away with orders and thinking that that's it, it doesn't work. Right. You know, you've got to build relationships with your target clients. Well, um, we touched on it before, um, but the introvert, and you've mentioned that you have those tendencies. I think a lot of people do. I feel like I'm kind of inclined that way. Um, are there special challenges or, or uh, do you just give up and get somebody else to do that? Or with intentional networking, can you overcome those um, 
introvert tendencies mm -hmm. and be a successful networker? What I have to do, and so I'm going to speak for me, what I have to do before any networking event, and I still do this to this day, many years later, I need to know before I go to that networking event what my goals are for that event. Uh, you know, I set my goals so that this way I'm not walking into a room of a hundred people that I don't know and then start trying to formulate a plan. Because then it's just... That's overwhelming. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, and, and you know, because I could walk in with my goals already set and sometimes feel overwhelmed. And now to, you know, to walk in and not have a plan, that would just, it, nothing is going to happen. Right, I think you'd start to shut down. Right, exactly. So I, try, I, I make sure I have my plan ahead of time. For me, I have a certain amount of people that I, I commit to, that I'm new people that I'm going to meet at that particular meeting or that event. And, when the, and that doesn't mean that every single one of them are going to be, you know, my, my, um, my target market. Okay. You know, but at least a, my, I have a goal that, if for, if, for instance, if for me, if I'm going to an event that's uh, an event that I've never been to before, let's say it's for, you know, an association meeting of one of my target clients. If I go to their association meeting, my goal would be to meet five people I have never met before and to have a conversation with them it doesn't mean I walk over shake their hand and you know and walk away that means that I stood there and had a conversation with them for a few minutes maybe five minutes ten minutes you don't want to spend all night with them because now you're kind of defeating the purpose uh, unless this person's talking about giving you a million dollar deal right then and there <laughs> but other than that you want right. you want to that's what the the one-on-ones will be for later on Mm -hmm. After the the business event, that's when we have the one on ones and we get to know each other better and do that know like and trust. So should that you mentioned five? Should that be my goal? No. Should that okay? So you've done it obviously, worked at it. Um, so they're not necessarily hard and fast rules. No. Nope. That your rule is going to work for me. My my feeling is this: if if your goal is to just show up at the event, then set that goal. Some people, they, they just getting there will be a victory. I set the goal of five myself after having done it for several years and felt like, you know, okay, so I go to these networking events, what, and, I, and I, my goal was always, okay, I want to meet people tonight. I want to meet people. But, okay, so now let's work, let's put a hard number on that. You know, do you want to meet two people, five people, 25 people, and who are the people you want to meet? And then eventually I became more intentional about the people I was meeting. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, and sometimes it, there are people at networking events or business events that I know by, you know, like, hey, how you doing, but never stood there and had a proper conversation with. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, those, I, it, sometimes I've been shocked to find out that, like, why haven't we been talking for the past five years? <laughs> We've been in these same meetings, and, and we right. could be passing business back and forth to each other. Or I have multiple people I could be sharing with you from my uh, spheres. So that's, but, and that's okay, too. It's, it'll happen when it's meant to happen. So getting past that, just seeing the person and, hail fellow well met, let's have a, yeah. develop the relationship. Right. Like, I, I have this, uh, I, you know, and if you're a person that's concerned, another question about the conversation, you know, people ask, uh, questions about networking so this mm -hmm. can tie in with that is people don't they're afraid of you know what do I do if I'm if I don't know what to say next in a conversation and so it's very it's the simplest thing that you could ever do and it's six words it's who what where when why and how if you could keep those words going in your mind while you're having a conversation with somebody if you feel like you're at a loss for words if you can just formulate a question with one that starts with one of those words, you can keep a conversation going. And always try to piggyback on what they were saying before. You know, who do you work for? Where is the company located? You know, how long have you been there? And then you can move it into family, you know, and personal stuff. It sounds like um, to characterize this, you should be listening more than talking 
Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're talking about framing questions and uh, so you shouldn't just walk up to somebody and just spill your brochure worth of oh, information gosh. on this person. Yeah, no, I really can't <laughs> stand that when somebody just does that to me. I mean, now, I want to learn who this person sure. is, but I don't want them to just walk over and vomit all their information all <laughs> over me. I'm sorry. I want, and I want to hear all about you. I really do. But I also want to, I don't want it to be coming at me like a, like a freight train. Right. Right. Also, that's not a conversation. No, no, no that's that's no. a beating. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, we've learned a lot of information from you today. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you want to touch on before we wrap this up? Uh, no, I think that we've really, you know, there's a lot around networking. And, and my biggest thing to say is, okay, yeah, one thing that we didn't talk about that was a big lesson for me. If you do, if you are a person that is concerned, is shy, or you know, nervous about going to networking, one of the things that was really important for me to learn is that the people at the networking events are more concerned with how they look than how you look. <laughs> you know, and that's that's one thing that was like a, it took the, it took a lot of pressure off of me that I was not the center of the universe. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. That, that helps, uh, especially for someone who's inclined to that introvert to yeah. not get so into their own uh, head, right. if you will, and just relax into the event. We have been very pleased to have Joe Navarra speak with us today. Joe is a speaker and best-selling author, and we've been very pleased to have him on RTP Business Live to learn more about Joe and how he can help your business. Uh, there is information that will be at the end of this video. It will be on the web page. And we hope you get in touch with Joe because intentional networking is more than just walking into a chamber meeting. It's having a plan and executing the plan. And uh, with that and with Joe's coaching, you can do wonderful things. Thanks again for joining us. Mm -hmm.